Hey, what's up guys? So I was sitting this morning thinking kind of what video I wanted to work on today and what topics I wanted to address. Uh, and there's actually a couple different things kind of going on right now that I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys. And so rather than doing some sort of, you know, particular tutorial or whatever, I figured I'd just kind of chat and share a couple of things that uh, currently got going on, different projects that I'm working on on my car, new detectors that are coming out, things like that. Uh, so obviously the big thing right now is the new Redline EX. Uh, it's updated Redline, GPS, blah, 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 right? Now, it was supposed to actually arrive to me on Friday uh, today. Um, it's actually gotten delayed on Escort's end. Uh, they just received it like a day late uh, on their end, so all the shipments are getting delayed a little bit. Uh, some people are going to be receiving it on Saturday. Uh, I'm actually going to be receiving mine on Monday instead of Friday, but not that big of a deal since I've actually got family coming to town this weekend, so probably for the best to not have like a tantalizing new toy in my hands to play with when I should really be you know, spending time with family, right? So that's cool. Anyway, um, as far as the Redline, uh, a lot of you guys, of course, have been asking about the Redline EX versus the Uniden R3. Kind of the main things that I'm looking for, I mean, a lot of the stuff we already know, right? Performance is supposed to be the same as the Redline, so the Uniden is going to offer better performance, and it's $200 less. Does that mean that it's automatically a better buy? Potentially, but not, ne not necessarily. You know, one of the biggest question marks for me right now is the blind spot filtering. Um, it's It should be better than the Redline, of course. It's an M3 Plus, so it should have better filtering than the Redline, which wasn't that good, but we kind of have to go off of like Escort's other detectors. Like It's an analog detector with improved IVT. If we take a look at the, uh, the Escort IX, that's an M4 with IVT, but it's not digital. The filtering there is not really that great. One of the biggest issues with those detectors is not just how many cars they can filter out, but actually how they present the alerts. So, you know, do you get like a weak signal that gradually ramps up, or do you just get a bah! like blast and it looks like, oh my gosh, you just got uh, instant owned with K band, you know? Slam on the brakes. Do you get that kind of alert versus something gradual and you're like, oh, this isn't a big deal? It's either far away or it's a blind spot fall. So, the presentation of the alerts is something that I'm really curious about with the red line. Now, I've heard some stuff, uh, they posted on the forums, okay, now it's not as good as the Max CI, Max CI 360, which makes sense. That's actually more in line of what I'm expecting. Now, the only other place where Escort has used the uh, Redline EX, the M3 Plus, so far, is in the rear antenna for the Max CI 360. The front antenna is an M7, it's a digital antenna, but the rear one is the uh, analog one with the improved IVT. Now, Jdong actually has one in the forums, and he's talked a little bit about it and said it's pretty good. Kind of one of the things I'm wondering if Escort is doing something like this to filter on K-band is saying if the rear antenna is not as good at filtering on K-band, what if they were to take a look at the front antenna, which has the better filtering, and the rear antenna and say if the front antenna is filtering the signal out, it's seeing it, but it recognizes it's a false, but the rear antenna can't do that, even though the rear antenna could see it, maybe the detector should filter it out anyway. So I'm not totally uh, convinced that the rear antenna Looking at the 360 Ci is going to be like a direct comparison of the Redline EX. It may be, but I don't know for sure. Um, it might not be doing that. You know, what about like if you just get uh, only picking up the signal from behind, it's maybe a radar cruise control or something behind and the front antenna is not seeing it. So, you know, there's definitely still some question marks. And that's kind of one of the things I've been wondering about with the Redline EX is how good the blind spot filtering is. So that's definitely one of the things that remains to be seen. Um, now, Let's say that it's good, and it's good enough for people to where it's like, okay, that's not a factor between the R3 and the Redline. Then what? Well, what are some of the other things to consider? Well, the Redline EX has MRCD support, which is awesome if you live in Canada. None of the international gun stuff matters here in the US. Uh, that's only other countries, Europe, uh, Canada, things like that. So if you need it, awesome. Definitely get that detector with those features. But if you don't need it, it doesn't matter, and there's no reason to pay extra for it. Uh, Bluetooth stuff, Escort Live is cool. Don't get me wrong, but you can run Waze for free, so I don't think that's really worth the extra 200 bucks. Uh, and then the only really other thing is the auto lockouts. So if you really want the auto lockouts, spend the extra 200 bucks. That could be a deciding factor, you know. Um, for some people, that's a big deal. You want a plug and play detector? The Redline will offer that. Is it worth slightly reduced range to get the auto lockouts? For the extra 200 bucks, for me personally, I don't think so. But there's a lot of people who would want that. Uh, the Uniden has some things that are being uh, worked on currently, like it does still ghost on uh, K-band showing up as K-A-band. Uh, the new firmware updates that we're beta testing improves this significantly, and so this is something that I expect to be addressed. The Redline, I don't think, will have this issue. I'm actually expecting the Redline to be 
pretty solid and reliable out of the gate. There's nothing really revolutionary that they're doing with this detector. I mean, the red line is a pretty solid detector at this point, you know? Then they add GPS and lockouts, which they've already done with a bunch of other detectors. The new IVT, this isn't their first rodeo with an M3+. Plus. They've already been working on that with the Max CI 360, so they've had a little bit of time to develop that. I'm guessing there's probably going to still be some things that they'll want to improve, of course, over time, but I don't think it'll be like what we saw with the Max, the first time Escort released a digital detector and that thing had a ton of problems. I'm not expecting that with the Redline EX. So there's still a lot of things that remain to be seen and I guess some of the biggest ones are the blind spot filtering and how reliable it is uh, overall as a detector. But uh, I think it's gonna be a viable option. We'll have to see kind of how good it is. So those are some of the things that I'm looking for when comparing those two detectors. Uh, now, another thing that I've been uh, kind of working on on my end is installing more remotes in my car. Uh, I recently installed the Redenso RC in my car and I've been liking it quite a bit. I've got it set up actually next to the Stinger VIP and I can run both of them, uh, not at the same time, but run both of them side by side, right? Uh, in any event, I've got the rear antennas for the Redenso RC and for the Net Radar. And I wanna actually install both of the rear antennas in my car uh, to get arrows. Now, I've got the, uh, the cable for the Net Radar so I can run the rear antenna now uh, and I need to get the cable for the Redenso RC so that I can plug it into the CPU. I don't have that yet so I'm kind of holding off on actually doing that install until I get the cable for the rear antenna for the RC. Um, as far as placement, uh, back when I used to run the Stinger VIP with two antennas, uh, where I'd had the rear antenna placed was actually uh, on the passenger headrest and it was nice because the, uh, the antenna, it's actually oriented like this and so you can mount it there and it doesn't actually take up a lot of room. Unfortunately with these style antennas they stick out a lot more and so I either have to push it back into the passenger headrest uh, and then this one actually sticks when my top goes up and down it actually hits the antenna and so I can't mount it back behind the passenger headrest like I could do with the Stinger which was oriented like this you know. So I think as far as placement I'm going to have to install it more in my trunk area. Um, it's not going to be the ideal placement because I am going to be installing it behind metal. It's going to be slightly curved with my trunk and I do have metallic paint. So I'm not super thrilled about that placement location, but I think that's realistically the best place that I can do it. And because it's just a rear antenna and it's primarily there for arrows, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Um, it may potentially impact the uh, arrow transitions. If it cuts down the sensitivity here, that could impact uh, how the arrows are working. So that's kind of my biggest question mark. So I would like to find a better place, but realistically, I think that'll be the best one. So I have to wait for the rear antenna for uh, this guy or the cable and then it's going to require uh, pulling panels and mounting under carpeting and all this kind of stuff in my car so I'm really waiting for that one before I do the install so those are kind of some of the uh, biggest things that I've got going on right now it's waiting for the uh, Redline EX to come in uh, hopefully some people this weekend will uh, start receiving it those people who got a Saturday delivery they'll start posting pictures or doing teardowns or giving their initial impressions and all that kind of stuff mine will be in Monday and I'll start messing with it then um, oh, I guess one last thing, ALP, I'll maybe do a separate video on this, I'll go out in my car and demo it. Uh, with the ALP, they actually just released a firmware update where, for those of you guys who are running the Bluetooth module, uh, you can now use the control pad to JTK and kill your jammers. I did a video the other day talking about the flick where you could have a dedicated button to do it. Um, but there's now a firmware update where if you have the control pad and the Bluetooth module, uh, if you're connected with Bluetooth, you're going to be able to use one of the buttons, not both of them, but one of the buttons, I think it's the menu button, to press the button and kill your jammers manually, which is awesome. I'm not sure if that also applies to the, uh, to the lockouts if you're running the radar detector. Uh, double press the menu button to lock out an alert or mute a K-band alert. I'm really curious, so actually once I get all this put together and uploaded, I'll go out to my car and I'll test that out as well and uh, do a quick video on that. But uh, anyways, that's kind of some of the latest stuff that I've got going on here on my end. So uh, more stuff to come, especially you know once the new red line comes in next week. And yeah, cool. That's that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.